Hey very warm, welcome back to Globe Trotting. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it would mean a lot. As Airbus continues to dominate the largely uncontested middle of the market sector, could the rumoured A322 or A322 be the next aircraft it goes on to release? Well firstly, what is this proposed A322 that I speak of to be built by the European plane maker in Airbus? Well, it basically is a proposed single aisle aircraft that had been part of the strategy for the future for some time. In premise, the A322 would have looked like an extension of the A321, which we know has become so successful in recent times. Nowadays, the A321 program is Airbus's best performing year over year, and the A322 was considered as a means to extend that success even further. Interest in an A322 emerged in 2021 when Bloomberg reported that the manufacturer was considering adding new efficient engines to the A320 body. This wasn't just taking place at this point with the A320 family, it even extended to the A350 with talk of a prospective A350 Neo coming in the mid 2020s. Obviously, that wouldn't eventuate for the moment, but it clearly showed the direction the manufacturer was looking to head in. Furthermore, Airbus would study a new composite wing to scale up production to higher rates if it deemed necessary. Such a new wing has largely been discussed as Airbus's new era. Remember, it's still attempting to seek ways to make its aircraft more efficient for the future. And could this be the means to move forward? Well, Airbus isn't the only plane maker leading the way in the form of wing studies. Fierce, but remember now struggling competitors Boeing has its TTBW study aligning with NASA, which, if successful, hopes to be adopted on a broader scale for eventual commercial aircraft adoption. Despite some discussion surrounding a prospective A322, this is an aircraft type that would not eventuate, at least for now. Throughout its time in the industry, Airbus has always looked towards studying prospective aircraft. It's basically just doing its due diligence with many not making it past the drawing board. Interestingly, while, say, a aircraft such as the A322 may not make it past the drawing board, it doesn't mean that the studies are completely useless. You may ask why. Well, as we've seen in the last half a century, many studies have seen fundamental things understood and then adapted into future aircraft. So, for example, while we may not have seen a 747 trijet, those studies may have have been instrumental in building, say, the next 747 variant and so forth. All these relevant studies can be considered as important in shaping a manufacturer's future and obviously helping it focus on profitable programs. While not publicly confirmed, the proposed stretch was rumoured to add four additional rows of seating. Now, this would create greater opportunity for the addition of upper class, who even adding just further economy rows. However, public interest in the aircraft didn't really exist and more sensible avenues began to be explored. One of those maybe more sensible avenues, you could say, has been the development of the A320neo broader family in the realm of the A321XLR, this an extra long-ranged variant of the A321neo. While the XLR doesn't focus on a stretch of the fuselage, such as that as the speculated A322, it does build upon capabilities capabilities in range that we saw on the LR. The XLR was announced in 2019 and pretty quickly burst onto the scene with hundreds of airlines ordering the aircraft. And since that launch, it's been a resounding success, despite some complications regarding the certification program. The mammoth orders that have taken place already have really helped prove that there is a demand for such an aircraft. Ultimately, the enhanced A321neo in the XLR may have very much just been a more compelling option for Airbus at the time. While the A322 aimed to integrate new efficient technologies to boost economic advantages for customers, there are equally strong arguments that the technology that was present wouldn't have been enough to warrant a purchase at its first discussion. 
However, the XLR's capabilities through the additional fuel tank could be majorly beneficial, but a cheap alternative without, say, major ramifications or big bold moves such as the addition of new engines or and or wings. Airbus could argue that when an airline was maybe considering, say, an A322, well, it might as well jump up to the A330neo. The A321neo and its derivatives really currently act as that perfect bridge. Was moving not ahead with the A322 a mistake or the right decision? Well, based on current performance metrics regarding the adoption of the XLR, no, you'd probably say that not moving ahead with the A322 isn't a mistake at this point. While airlines have still looked to scream out for a true NMA aircraft from Boeing, the A321neo has done its very best to fill these shoes, knowing that Boeing's not moving ahead with their own alternative. The XLR has been a resounding success, and it is slotting into that middle of the market sector, and is really going to become a fantastic alternative for longer ranged flying on a single aisle at the fraction of the cost that, say, a wide body would be. Furthermore, again, I've got to reiterate that Boeing's failure to proceed with its own NMA has allowed Airbus to largely run the market uncontested, which has proved to be a huge advantage for the plane maker. And obviously, all these derivatives it wants to make sure are going to have some form of use to customers. The last thing it wants to do is, say, release a variant and then basically cannibalize an existing one with that new version. Each has to be different to a certain extent. And while the A322 was going to have potential extra rows and obviously that longer fuselage, they were just deemed to be better alternatives. While this doesn't rule out, though, an A322 in the future if demand was to require it in say 10, 20, 30 years, Airbus no doubt is going to, in a similar sense to its competitor Boeing, wait and see. Why? Because they want to be able to understand how key technologies that they are studying now are going to develop in say the next 5 to 10 years for future adoption on really the next era of commercial airliners. And that is what you'll imagine a lot of these aircraft programs are at least aiming to be. The A320neo, Airbus wouldn't necessarily want it to be just a simple re-engine. It will want to adopt many new technologies to that. And Boeing has made it clear they didn't move forward forward with the NMA for a lot of reasons, but one of those was they didn't feel the technology readily available to them was a big enough upgrade. It's widely considered that the next five years are going to be key for developing those technologies that I speak of. So as a result, I personally feel it's going to be a fascinating watch. And labeling all this as important for Airbus would definitely be an understatement. While its competitor Boeing is struggling now, Airbus knows it has to remain watchful for the day that the American plane maker hopefully will return to its former glory. And once this occurs, Airbus will truly have a run for its money and will need to carefully make its next moves to further cement itself as an industry leader and really the leader across the industry. It is in a very fortunate position at the moment that while it has its struggles and aircraft are being delayed, it is by no means in the state that Boeing finds itself in, so it can start planning for the future in a much better position and try and position itself to dominate for decades to come. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for more industry analysis. And we'll fly.